So I begin here still in part C of problem number three and what we're trying to find is h prime of 17. Well if you recall from the fundamental, the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, if h of t is the integral defined function from 9 to t of e of x minus l of x, then the derivative of h, h prime of t, is simply e of t minus l of t. And so h prime of 17 is then just e of 17 minus l of 17, and that's going to be the net rate at which people are, the number of people in the park is changing. So we'll go back to the calculator. We have our two functions, y1, which is e of t, y2, which is l of t. So I can do this, go back to the home screen, clear, and I want to do vars, y vars, function, y1 of 17 minus vars y vars function y2 of 17 and I would get negative 380 rounded to the nearest person and that is the rate at which the number of people in the park is changing at 5 o'clock. That means that people are leaving at the rate of 380 people per hour at 5 o'clock, which makes sense. At 5 o'clock, people are going to start to leave the park. So I'll close the calculator and maybe add a little explanation, or at least add some units, negative 380 people per hour. And I've already explained above that h prime of 17 is the rate at which the number of people in the park is changing. Since it's negative, it means that people are, more people are leaving than are entering, and the net number of people is going down in the park. All right, so part D. At what time t from 9 to 23 does the model predict that the number of people in the park is a maximum? Remember the number of people in the park is not just the number of people who are entering, it's the number entering, it's the rate, it's going to be the integral of the number of people entering minus, one more time, the integral of the rate at which people are entering minus the rate at which people are leaving. And that will be a maximum when the rates, the derivative of that, up when, when h prime of t changes from positive to negative. And since h prime of t is just e of t minus l of t, we just need to look for where it's zero. And that will happen when e of t is equal to l of t. Now we can use the calculator to graph this. I'm going to need to think about my window. My x values or my t values are going to go from 9 to 23 by ones. Now my y values, the minimum number of people I can have in the park is zero. What's the maximum number of people that can be in the park? Um, let's just say it's 10,000. Have that go up by thousands. So let's just see what we get here for this graph here. All right, so we definitely don't need that much on the Y. I'm going to go back and adjust the Ys only to go up to maybe 4,000. graph that. All right, so I have a much better picture. Now, if I were to trace here, and so you can see from this that um, the, the curve that's first higher is e of t. So e of t is greater than L of t. So if you were to subtract e of t minus L of t, you'd get a positive value. Once you pass that intersection, they switch and L of t becomes greater than e of t. And when you subtract e of t, when you subtract e of t minus L of t, you're going to end up with a negative. So at that point, the derivative is going to go from positive to negative, and that will be the maximum point there. So I'm simply going to find that point of intersection. I'm going to do second calc five for intersect, first curve, second curve, and that gives me at time 15.794, and that's going to be the time at which the number of people in the park is at a maximum. And so that will do it for this uh, problem, and we'll continue with problem four in the next video.